Good morning and welcome to episode 15 of the Made in the AM podcast. My name is Fia and I'm coming to you from a very grey and wet Tuesday morning here in Denmark. Um, as I said, my name is Fia and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Bongoyev, which I always put down below, because who am I kidding? You're not supposed to know how to spell it if you're not from Denmark. Even if you are, it's a double A. One of the quacks. I considered not recording this week because I don't... It feels like there's been no progress and at the same time there's been some frustrations on my part. Um, and we like to pretend that well, crafting is peaceful and fun and just a joy and, well, at least in my case, that's not true. And this week has been one of those weeks and it would be so much easier to just ignore it and just skip a week and come back next week and be like, oh, well, this is how it was always supposed to be. But let's be serious for and honest for a moment. Crafting sometimes sucks. Big time. But before I show you why that is, or at least why that is for me this week, let me show you my knitting. And yes, it's still Nanny Swimo, so I am still knitting on my Belmont cardigan. Last week I was still working on the body. I hadn't, I think I was like 10 or 15 rows from uh, from separating for the front and the back. And this week my yarn is a tangle. <laughs> this week I have a back. I have two fronts and I have started a sleeve and I think this is only my my third again um, or fourth I think it's only my third it is uh, Sandus um, Alpaga Silk in this very very fancy 7012 uh, colorway and it's really soft and so nice. The construction of this sleeve is that you, as you can see, you have the armhole here, so you pick up all the way around and then you work back and forth in short rows to form the... Okay, I'm stuck to something. <laughs> I have woven in all my ends except for the one starting the sleeve, so that's what I was stuck on. Anyway, you work back and forth creating this uh, sleeve cap and then you work down. And I haven't gotten very far on the sleeve. It is a three-quarter length sleeve, so it's not like it's going to be like all that long it's not going to be that long <laughs> so I'm just slowly working my way down it is I do have more sleeve stitches than what it calls for because the pattern looked very very tight um, on this lovely model lovely thin small model and I have big arms. I mean, yay. Um, yes, and these these sleeves are a bit baggy, so they tend to draw up. Um, so I I decided to uh, well, I didn't actually have a plan in mind as much as I was just deciding that. The pattern has you pick up every other, one stitch for every two 
rows around, uh, ending in X number of stitches. Well, I like to pick up at a ratio of two stitches per three rows. Um, because that's that's um, a nice transition, and it's about what you usually have uh, the difference between your stitch uh, gauge and your row gauge, so it tends to work out. It does mean that on the back I have more stitches than I have on the front, but it's like you won't notice once. I'm wearing it. So yeah, that's what's happening. I um, I had knit night yesterday, so that's when a lot of the sleeve knitting happened. Because after I'd knit all of this and done the three needle bind off in the shoulder seam and woven in all my ends. Which there were a couple of extra ends because, well, both because I had to break the yarn to do the different uh, parts, but also because there were some knots in the yarn. Not a whole lot and not enough to annoy me. I, I think two of the skeins had a knot each. But still it's extra ends to, to weave in and I hate weaving in ends. So instead of leaving it to the end, I figure, oh, I'll do it now. And if I keep this up and actually weave in the ends on the sleeves as I finish them, I'll only have the colors, uh, color ends to weave in. The co there are already button bands in this, and it in as you go. So once the sleeves are finished, I just need the color. And seeing as it's only the 15th of November today, this should be no problem at all. Or oh, finishing it within uh, November should be no problem at all. So yeah, that's all of my knitting for this week. And well, it's nice to be a monogamous knitter in that I don't have to make a decision. Sorry. It's not even that early. I don't know what it is. I think it's the weather that's just making me want to hibernate. I do apologize for yawning. Um, what I was saying was that the advantage to you to be a, being a monogamous knitter, which I'm really not, and my mind is like, you should be knitting someone, something else. This can't be the only thing you share. This can't be the only thing you work on. Um, while I do have that, it's nice to just get up and pick out my knitting and like, okay, I'm knitting asleep. And that's it. I don't have to decide between what I want to knit or what I can knit, it's just, oh, here's a sleeve, let's do that. So as you can tell, this isn't my crafting bowl. Um, my crafting bowl is more of a sewing bowl. Let me just put this aside. Last week I showed you my Dahlia. My Dahlia dress by Colette Patterns. And all, all I needed to do was the uh, color binding and or oh, yeah the neck binding and the, the bottom hem. Well, I did that, and this is what it looks like. See, we have the bias tape on, all sewn down by hand. Um, this is gaping because I cut it, and I'll tell you why in a bit. And all the way down to this 
let me try to show you. We are under the lights again because of the weather. Down to the blind hem. Now, collab in the pattern book says you should do it by hand. I'm already doing the bias tape by hand and it takes a long time and it's just, yeah. So I didn't want to do the hem by hand. So instead I ordered a blind hem foot for my machine. And what it does is you have it folded over so that you have You have it folded over like this. So you have this part, this dark blue part here. Okay, let's keep it in the light. This dark blue part here is actually the inside of your hem. And what it does is it'll sew along this line and then it'll just make one single stitch into your main fabric or your skirt. And then it'll go along the line and then Oop, just do another stitch and it'll do that all the way around. So in the end you end up with a hem where you just get a tiny blip of a stitch every once in a while. And because I used black thread and because it's this a black pattern to the fabric, you don't notice it. Well, you if you look carefully you can see where it is. But if you're looking this carefully at my hem, I might kick you. Just saying. That's not the wool. And as I said, I'd get back to you on why I have started on doing the tape up here. I finished this and I put it on. And as you can see, it has scandals and it's supposed to fit your body quite nicely. And it does, if I pull it up here, unfortunately, the neckline is very wide. So that means when I put it on, you can see my bra straps, and it hangs down lower than it should, meaning that I get a back under my breasts, and that's not a flattering look, let me tell you that. It's not a flattering look. And the, the saggy open shoulder makes me worry that suddenly it'll fall down. And of course that also means it's a low neck in the back. Now, if I had done what I'm supposed to do, we all know how it goes. And this is, we're supposed to knit a swatch to make sure we get gauge. And... Uh, so it's also supposed to make a muslin first to work out if there's anything they need to change. Now for this, the only thing I would have known from a muslin is that the neck is too wide. I already had this concern several times during the process, but I trusted the pattern instead of actually trying to figure out the measurements. And also I had it in my head, I don't damn know why, because it's nowhere in the pattern that you would also, like you have here in the front, you have a gather, that you would also do that in the back. Don't know why I had that in my mind, but I had, and it doesn't. So now I have a dress that's too wide in the neck. Now, I could just... With knitting, I very rarely do uh, a, a, a gauge swatch. But with knitting, you can just rip it out and no harm's done. You might have extra ends because you cut the yarn, but really, that's the worst of it. Fabric? Well... If I, I've already cut the pieces, so it's not like I can just take it all out and do something else with it. Well, I could, but it'll be pieced. 
Um, I don't think it would be that nice. I could take out the, well, at any rate I'll have to take out of this uh, bias tape, which, it, what, which is what I had started, but then I thought, no, I'll show you, I'll show you my frustration, and then I can do it over, and hopefully show you the nice end result. So, I could take out all of these seams, and take in and take in the extra fabric, but really it's just it's extra fabric around the neck. The sleeves are not uh, fit me. The the bodice fits me if it's just pulled up to where it's supposed to be. So really, it's a question about taking out some some fabric in the shoulders and possibly the back but I don't want to cut into the fabric and I don't want to take it all out so I have an idea and this is what I'm going to try which is also the simple fix and it may work it might not work but at least then I've tried the simple fix which will just mean that I have done some extra sewing that I have to undo what I'm thinking is I need to take out f some fabric here and possibly the neck. Um, so there's, there's a gather here, keeping in with that theme. I thought, well, maybe if I took this is the sleeve, one of the sleeves. What if I gathered at the top here? That would say I got some of the fabric. Because when you gather, you're essentially cinching it in, or cinching the fabric in. Don't take out some of some of the fabric because I want to hoist it. It's not enough to just take out fabric in the back and make the neck uh, smaller. I have to put it up as well. So doing it in the sleeves would pull it up, or shoulders would pull it up. In my mind, again, I am very much a beginner with all of this so this could just be if you're rolling your eyes at me that's fine uh, <laughs> i'm sure i'll survive um but yeah i'm thinking that what i'll do is i'll do the gathers on the uh, shoulders first try that on without putting on the bias tape just trying it on seeing if that's enough or if I have to take or uh, do the same in the back of the neck to pull that in because I didn't mind the back being a bit baggy um, as long as it doesn't affect the look on the front because really a bit of bagginess in the in the back which could be solved with a pleat if, if uh, nothing else works and Let's be honest, I might just do that instead. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, try. I'm going to try drawing in because the essential is that the front bodice um, fits like it should. And I don't. Th I'm not saying it has to be like sucked on because I do like to breathe. Um, it's like a small quirk of mine. But yeah, that, those are my thoughts, and um, it's what I'm going to do this week. If I forgive my dress long enough to actually do it, because um, this is the second time I'm ripping out the spice tape. The first time, which is what I told you last week, I had start. Yeah, let me show you. If you see here, you start out by sewing the bias tape by machine onto the front, or no, it's not the onto the right side of the fabric. 
and then you fold it over like this and sew it onto the back and with something that is almost identical to the um, blowing hem I talked about on the, the hem in that you sew you run the thread through the bias tape at the bottom and then you nick into the uh, main fabric and then you go back and you do that by hand all the way around. Now, doing it on, on the sleeve was fun because it's it's a fairly small piece you have to do. Doing on the neckline, especially a large neckline. Let's just say that I watched TV while doing it, because otherwise it wouldn't have get, got done. Um, yeah. So that's my... I wish things were perfect, but they're really not. Um, segment. But it will get done, because I still... Even with picking... Or, yeah, picking apart the, the color again and having to readjust. I was, when I tried it on yesterday, to make sure that everything fit fine because I really wanted to wear it for you today. That was my plan. I wanted to wear it. And still, instead, I'm wearing my Still Light Tunic by Vera Velamaki. Um, but yeah, I wanted to wear my Dahlia dress because you've seen the different stages of it. it. Just wasn't going to happen. Maybe next week. Maybe not. So I got a bit frustrated yesterday. And yeah. This does mean trying to look at the uh, positive that I get to redo where the where the two ends of the bias tape need because I wasn't smart enough to fold the end under so it'll get a clean uh, edge but I get to do it this time silver linings and all but yeah I do have some other sewing, or oh, I should say, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's my blind hem test, um, and this is a cut off of the fabric that I'm going to be using. I don't know if you can tell uh, because of the light, but that those uh, mountains there is where it dips in to the main fabric and on the right side you get those little dips I don't know if you'll be able to tell but that is the fabric from my next sewing project um, which is the Asta um, well, it's a shirt. Uh, Asta comes in three different versions. And the difference between version 1 and version 3 is just the sleeves. And version 2 has some pleats. Some pleats here. And I know it's dark because I have the light set up over my table. Um, what I'm doing is I am using the body of version 1 with the long sleeves of version 2. And I'm doing it in the... This fabric, which I bought in London. 
It's uh, a Japanese fabric. Uh, it's from uh, Koka, which is the same company I think that does Naniro. And it's a temple skyline. I am not religious. My mom is a Shintoist and a Buddhist. Um, a lot of Japanese people have more than one religion, so that's why you have. If you look at the demographic of Japan and the religion, you'll see there's Christians, you have Buddhist, you have Shintoist and Taoist, and if you add it all up, it's more than a hundred percent. Um, and in the Western world, we're used to you can only what is it the Bible says you'll have no other god but me, Japan. Taoist, Shintoist, you have a lot of gods, so you can be Christian as well. It's just another god. Um, <laughs> One of my second cousins went to one of the Catholic schools in Japan. And there are Catholic schools, there are Catholic high schools and Catholic universities. It's just how it is. It's it's nothing unusual to them. But yeah, I really liked how simple it is because it's just a black outline. But it's also really different because we're used to seeing skylines of cities and suddenly, oh, you have a Buddha in the middle of it. And you have the gates and a bridge. Yeah, all different kinds of elements you'd find in Japan. Just pretending to be a skyline. So I have all my pieces. No, that's not true. I have all my pieces except for the interfacing cut out. And before I got frustrated with my dress, I was planning on changing the thread to. I'm planning on doing this in white. Um, to. Because it's mainly white, so I could do it in black, but I, th I prefer doing it in white. And I was going to start putting, well, at least start to do the stay stitching around the curves and putting the back yoke together with the front pieces. Yeah, that hasn't happened because I got frustrated and that's this is actually the back yoke. So you have the back yoke and then you what I was showing you before is actually the back piece. Let me just unfold this. So you have you have the yoke and then you have the back piece where you do a pleat. So it fits in. Nicely. And you can actually do this in the contrasting colour. Um, which could be fun. Not with this because I would have to find something that goes with it somehow. And I like how why I wanted it to have long sleeves is that it's not a traditional colour, or well, shirt colour, <coughs> excuse me, it's not a traditional shirt colour, it's not a traditional um, one colour fabric, it has a print, so I like the juxtaposition of the print that is, could be a bit I want to say cartoonish, but cartoonish isn't what I mean. But you know, it's a print. It's an unusual print, so it could be a bit, oh, very casual. But the long sleeves 
which do have um, I think they go over here. I mean, come on. There are cuffs. There are somewhere I have the insert that took me ages to draw up. Which isn't here because it's over here. Right. That goes in and and you fold it over in a weird fashion and all of a sudden you have somewhere to put your button. And this is not a beginner person, it says intermediate. The thing about colored patterns not all of the patterns, but some of them, uh, is that they have hosted sirloins, which has two people, two of their staff doing it, along with whoever wants to do it. And they have a lot of pictures showing you how to do the different steps and doing a more in-depth uh, explanation than what you get in the booklet. You do, I mean, the booklet shows you the different steps, but you do sometimes get uh, yeah, just like the hem of the dress, it just says, do a blind hem. Fold it up under a quarter of an inch, fold it under another three quarters of an inch, do a blind hem. Okay. The folding I get, pressing I get, but the actual blind hem, I have to read up on. There are some amazing YouTube videos out there, not just for uh, for knitting, but also for sewing. And yeah, I sometimes use those. Now, that's everything I'm working on. I don't even know if you could say I'm working on the uh, shed. I cut out the fabric. I've actually cut out every single pattern piece which meant doing every single pattern piece of this tissue paper and yes they do fold up nicely because I iron my tissue paper <laughs> I might be strange in doing that but I wanted to fit into the sleeve I mean it did so when it came to me and actually I do iron up my pattern pieces and I put them into the sleeve as well which means I could see my Dahlia pattern from here it does get a bit bulky but then it's all together but the reason I did all the pattern pieces is that I am planning on doing another shirt long sleeve I don't know if I'll do the pleats I don't think I have enough enough fabric to do the pleats I'm not sure I'm that interested in doing the pleats but I'll do that in the Liberty fabric uh, the one with the animals um, and I am doing this bottom you in another in, in another liberty pattern or fabric um, because it's flowy and it's very busy so a simple a simple top with the flowy uh, flowy sleeves I think would be it would look very elegant because it's a very flowy and drapey uh, fabric so yeah those that's why I cut up every piece because I'm more likely to use the shorter sleeves to be honest than the longer sleeves but I do think that a fun print if you're going to do a shirt 
will look very casual in short sleeves so yeah but it's nice to have the option and I do think that this mock-up they've done looks very casual if you go to Colette's uh, website or, or search on uh, Instagram they do look more shirt-like when worn in something other than grey linen fabric which is what it looks like this is but yeah. other things and although I started by saying I don't have anything to share here and I would this consider just skipping this this is probably going to be at least as long as usual I hope you bear with me it's it's very wordy or ranty in a almost episode um, some fun things well last week last week I told you I was going to the theatre to watch the Hunch Hunchback of Notre Dame musical which is the Disney version and I went to what is an average average sized theatre it's like it's not huge and I was a bit will it be as effective with a small stage and I haven't really I've seen the cartoon when it came out and a lot of it and I've read the book a lot of it happens ice outside of church and we get into the room well, into the theatre and it's a small stage and it's set up like a church there's a reason why this musical at least in Denmark this version of it gets five or six stars at, or gets the maximum almost everywhere and it's actually sold out the rest of the, of the dates it's shown because it's just they take advantage of having screens built into the background and the sides of the stage. So instead of just having the stage be like a one-dimensional thing, they use more several dimensions and it actually wraps around uh, the audience for a bit. Um, I don't think I would have liked to have been sat on the first three or four rows because the stage goes around so the first four rows I think you're actually with the, your side to part of the stage which you don't have any access next to you but you do have them on a balcony above you playing the statues and the gargoyles and you have screens which you can't tell are screens I think it's LED that actually shows some of the scenery and it was just I had goosebumps, I'm, seriously, um, not only because the actors were really, really good and really excellent singers, but the, the whole, just how they done it, like the Hellfire song, this, the floor beneath us when the hellfire was really going actually started shaking a bit and you didn't notice well if you looked for it you could see it but you didn't really notice how all the axes because this, the stage is pretty small they actually don't have a lot of time to get from the balcony and down to other parts so for parts of it, they actually change then to the next character right in front of you without you even noticing because something else is going on and because the changes were simple but very effective so, happy occasion then we don't talk about the election because a knitting podcast is not it's not the place to talk politics and then Leonard Kern passed away 
and I cried for half a day. Um, I like my men old and grumpy, apparently. Oh, I have a soft spot for old and grumpy people, uh, men. Um, which stems back to Inspector Morse um, and John Thor. And although I'm sure he would, well, he wouldn't object to being called grumpy. Um, then that can hit something with me when I was a teenager. And yeah, him and Alan Rickman. There's some things about 2016 I won't forgive. There's two and Victoria Wood. I know we've lost an, a lot of big stars, but those three? Yeah, some of us would like a do-over on 2016. Also for personal reasons, but yeah. Um, and then I am a really huge Formula One fan. I've been to races around the world. Would love to go back again. And there was a race in Brazil this weekend. It was, it's this one race left. I don't care about who wins it. I wouldn't say the championship because, well, I prefer one over the other, but they're not my favorite drivers. But a driver who's been there for years, Philippe Massa, is Brazilian and he's stopping. After the season, he's retiring to do something else, I'm sure, because they never really retire and they just go into the formats. And he crashed out and he was emotional um, because that was his last home race. And he, he walked through the pit lane to a standing ovation from the other teams. And I lost it. I'll admit that. So yeah. Now he's retiring too. Soon it'll only be boring ones left. But still it's cars. They go fast. On happier notes. The reaction, reaction to the election in the knitting community has been one of love. Um, I'm sure you haven't, I'm sure you've seen the uh, paid forward and knitters paid forward uh, thing that started immediately after the uh, result of the election uh, was announced. And a viewer of this podcast was really nice and decided to, to give me a pattern. Um, and I've actually prepared for something, don't be surprised. Um, Heather, who is a viewer, um, decided to gift me the Agatha socks, which is a pattern sock that a friend of hers actually made. And. The funny thing is, I've been thinking that I'm really bored of vanilla socks and I wanted to make pattern socks because pattern socks are fun to knit. Uh, first of all, they're quick because it's just a sock uh, compared to knitting a garment. Um, and because, well, it, they feel a bit fancy when you wear them. I don't know why, I just always do. But yeah, the Agatha Socks by Inish Knits. Uh, thank you Heather for, for sending this to me. And um, I'm, I have to look through my stash to see what I have in a solid sock yarn. Um, because now I want to cast this on. Again, I think that might be part of the monogamous knitter thing. That it's just so unusual for me to be monogamous that it's like, let me cast on something else. Especially now that it's like, okay, I'm doing the sleeves, the sleeves are three quarter length. They won't take that long to make. 
So I can actually do something else instead of that, oh my god, will I ever make it through this month and do it, all of it in this month feeling. Uh, so yeah. Other happy things. I ordered yarn. I actually ordered this last month, but it was a pre-order. Um, um, it arrived last last week, Saturday morning actually. Um, I was stressed, but it was a lazy Saturday morning, so yeah. I think my post, uh, uh, well, woman, as it was, was happy that I was just wearing clothes. I've never answered the door naked, but still, I'm sure she appreci appreciated that I was wearing clothes, even if they were dirty and ratty. But yeah, sorry about the crunching, um, but I kept it together. Because I wanted to show you, and because I haven't um, actually, uh, yeah, she sent me a tea, caramel apple pie tea, which I've seen before, never tried it. Oh, the company Tea Kanne is actually a hundred years older than me, exactly a hundred years. Hmm. That's funny. But how can you not like it's apple pie and caramel? I have to try it. The yarn I got was a um, pre-order, and it's a once a year thing, apparently, and it's from Herbstblatt, like Gila. Don't know if you can see that. Uh, she also has a podcast on YouTube under the same name and she's on Etsy and she did a pre-order for her St. Martin um, colorway and St. Martin is a bonfire night as far as I can tell that happens at the end of October beginning of November around there and I bought for skates and it's a bluish grey background with a lot of blips and blobs of different colours uh, representing the uh, fireworks from Bonfire Night and she had a small sample of it um, lying next to she did an Instagram post and she had a small sample of it. And I have the the Uncommon Thread to Billion colorway, which is grey with a blips of, well, almost it's a speck of grey. And I have that in my cardigan. And I wanted something with more colour in it, but still with the grey. Um, and this little plugin might be it, because it, while it is at this purplish blue grey background. According to Swatch, it has a lot of colour blips in it, larger blips and closer together. But I'm thinking it needs to be something that's simple or not with with, with very little patterning in it. I don't know what yet. It'll be a garment of some sort, which is why I got four. Um, Force games. It's a it's a hazel soft sock figure weight yarn. It's uh, eighty percent merino wool and twenty percent polyamide, which is like a nylon. And it's sixteen hundred yards or yards meters total. So it'll be a garment. Um, I can get a jumper out of this. I love her label with the leaf. Or leaves, actually. 
Yeah. So yeah, can't wait. Can't wait to see what this will be. At the same time, one of the reasons I kept it in the bag is because I wanted to... This actually feels rather really plump finger wide. Sorry. I wanted to wind it up. I was like, no, I have to. I have a cardigan. I have a deadline on the cardigan. I think when I finish this sleeve, firstly, I'm going to wind this up so that I'm ready as soon as I finish the cardigan to do something else. I might actually start I might actually start before I finish it. The Belmont cardigan. Oh, I didn't mention that, did I? This cardigan is the Belmont cardigan uh, by Gwen Jumston. And it's a cropped cardigan that I intend to wear with skirts and dresses. And yeah, she put in a handwritten note on the glittering card. Really sweet, really lovely touches. Um, yeah, I actually got her pretty fast. And her her pre-order turnaround time so wasn't that long either. Which often impresses me with these indie dyes because I know I know it's her main job now, I think. But still I you can't it's a process darling you on. You have to get the skates ready, you have to get your dice ready, you have to... Everything has to come together at the perfect time and then it takes time for it to absorb and it takes time for it to wash out and to dry and to re it and do the labels and everything. But the drying time, the time it takes to wash it and set the dye, you have no control over them. So, you have to really be able to plan things, or just be lucky, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, I've never been interested in dying. Oh, I've read a bit on it, so I know some bits, but I've never had this like, oh, I need to die. So, I don't know how much time it actually t does take. But still, you have to, you have to plan, don't you? And you have to know what you want, what colors you want. So, but yeah, I have literally nothing else to talk about. And this is probably way longer than it should be. Um, I hope you bear with me and. Thank you for watching and me ramble about things and pretend that I know what I talk about. Hopefully next time or next week I'll have some more positive sewing news. If not, it's a process, okay? Thank you for watching. Have a great week. Bye.